Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, it's your time. king is coming Let's go. to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt. Let's go ahead. That's it. Right. <laughs> we tried. We tried. <laughs> we'll pick it up inside. Right. Come right through here. We tried. It, it is. You must feel like the ultimate Episcopalians, up, down, in, out, we've done everything. Reading once more from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophets, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the fault of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us a sign of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into the glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
a reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus? The priests paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment 
Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And the disciples became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, Truly I tell you, this very night before the One who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many and for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, We will all become deserters because of you. I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray, that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given the crowd a sign, saying, 
The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once Judas came to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then the crowd came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, Peter sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so, they may, so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, have you no answer? What is that? What is that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. I put you on the oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witness? You have no answer this blasphemy. What is your verdict? The scribes and elders answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in Jesus' face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus in Galilee. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When Peter went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Judas said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. 
But the chief priests and elders said, What is it that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, Judas departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of Jews? <laughs> Jesus said, You say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to the crowd, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests and the elders had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And the crowd said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said. Then Pilate asked. Why, what evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more. <laughs> Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am, I am innocent of the man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood, his blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on Jesus and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, the soldiers came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. Please stand. And when the soldiers came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of his call, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. 
And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now. God warns still, for this man said, The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, Lemai, Sambaktia. That is, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This, this man, man is calling for Elijah. Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, Wait. Let, let us see whether Elijah, Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. Joseph went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Joseph then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, Jesus' disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people. He has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be the worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as, as secure as you can. So they 
went with a guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. If you ask them, the people of Jericho will tell you that theirs is the oldest inhabited city on earth, the oldest continuously inhabited city on earth. It was in that city that Jesus, not long before he headed to Jerusalem, met Zacchaeus and called him down from the tree, and Jesus healed a couple of blind men. Jericho is 800 feet below sea level. Jerusalem, the highest point of Jerusalem, the Mount of Zion, is at about tw between 23 and 2600 feet above sea level, give or take. So it's 3300 feet and 15 miles from Jericho to Jerusalem. And that was the last long walk that Jesus took in his ministry. That walk between Jericho and Jerusalem. 15 miles straight up. Desert, wilderness, thought by some to be a place of robbers and thieves. He had a good long time to change his mind. And Jesus had no illusion about what was going to happen in Jerusalem. He might have been um, not clear on some of the details, but he was clear because it was there in Jericho that he gave to his disciples his third prediction of his own passion. 15 miles, 3,300 feet going up. Do you recall on the second Sunday of Lent when I was preaching and I mentioned a priest by the name of Suzanne Guthrie and how she said that many people come to her and tell her that their favorite season of the church year is Lent. And she said, well, perhaps that's because Lent is that time given to us to separate truth from illusion, to separate the truth from illusion in our lives, perhaps our spiritual lives. And I had decided that that would be my spiritual practice for Lent. It wouldn't be the giving up and the taking on of things, but the examination of my life in the light of separating truth from illusion. That was my life. As I took that as a spiritual practice, I saw that Jesus' ministry, Jesus' ministry was one of separating illusion from truth. And it began, didn't it, with those temptations in the wilderness? Separating truth from illusion, beginning with Satan. Satan, you may think that truth is this, but I tell you, Scripture says, you will do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. It is not the power of this world that is the important power. And you do not tempt the Lord your God. It is the Lord your God. Him only do we worship. That's where he began separating truth from illusion. And didn't he do it then in the fifth chapter of Matthew? In the Beatitudes. 
Blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who mourn. The world thinks the meek, the peacemakers, those who mourn are this. And yet I tell you, the truth of the matter, the truth in the kingdom of God, is that the more those who mourn will be comforted. began by separating illusion from truth. He let people know that piety on the street corner was not the piety that God was looking for, but the piety that comes, the prayers that come from the hidden place, from the prayer closet. Truth was that true treasure is not something that is stored up in barns or in banks. There's something about the heart where treasure is concerned. And then there was that final decision to go to Jerusalem, even though he knew what he knew. One prediction of the passion, two predictions of the passion, Third prediction in Jericho, 3,300 feet up, separating the truth from illusion. I struggled myself with what is the separation of truth from illusion in my own life. And then I read that the matter of Jesus was that he came to call us to making new decisions about our values, our relationships, that life in Jesus was a call to a realignment of what was good and true in our lives, a realignment of our commitments and our priorities. I decided that, that realignment, commitments, priorities, relationships, that was this separation of truth from illusion. There is no greater realignment that takes place than in Passion Week and in Jerusalem. Passion Week is truly that separation of truth and illusion for our lives. What they thought was their king, wasn't their king. And all those who Matthew tell us left behind him when he left Jericho, proclaiming him, were not there when he was on the cross. There was indeed a separation. What they thought was Messiah, the Messiah they wanted, he was not going to be. That was not his truth. Those who thought they were best friends forever had to look squarely in the face of their own traitorship. They were traitors. They had to learn that violence begets more violence. And all that glitters is not Silver, not 30 pieces of silver. There was illusion. And here he was standing on a mountain, pinned to a cross. There was truth. I wonder for you this Lent, where where have you found the truth that will sustain you? I wonder during this Lent, what illusion have you struggled with? What illusion have you met head on as Jesus met Satan head on? What illusion have you cast out of your life and found 
your spiritual life, the better for it. In the 12th century, there was a monastic, Bernard of Clairvaux, who was writing to his fellow monks about the keeping of Holy Week. He wrote to them, be watchful, brethren, lest the mysteries of this season pass you by without your gaining from them their due fruit. Abundant is the blessing. You must bring clean vessels to receive it. Clean vessels, I would say, those are vessels from which the illusion has been removed. You must bring clean vessels to receive it and offer loving souls and watchful senses, sober affections and pure consciences for such great gifts of grace. All Christians practice more than useful, usual devotion in these seven days and try to be more humble and more serious than is their wont so that in some sort they may share in Christ's sufferings, and rightly so, for the passion of the Lord is here in truth, shaking the earth, rending the rocks, and opening the tombs, and his resurrection also is at hand. You are here with your devotion. Practice more devotion in this week than may be your usual practice, than may be your walk. For the passion of the Lord is here. There will be the shaking of the earth, the rending of rocks, and the opening of the tombs. The dead will walk the streets of the old city. resurrection also is at hand. We stand with Christ in his suffering. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin, which means spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christian people, that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For those who, weighed down with financial and personal hardship, failure, sorrow, or feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. At this time, let us pause and offer to Christ our own pain, our own sufferings, as well as our own victories and our own joy. Ask your prayers for Kurt Miller, who died yesterday morning. We lift up before Christ all men and women served by St. Lawrence Chapel. Pray for help. Pray that they'll find help and solace and comfort in their sufferings. Ask your prayers for those who suffer from addiction. Remember those who mourn the deaths of loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, one have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Episcopal Church. I'm willing about it. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Episcopal Church. I'm glad that you are here with us and worshiping. And um, despite our best efforts, it rained a little bit. Actually, we could use the rain, but it would have been nice if we could have gotten inside first. So we're glad that you're here with us and sharing in our walk here as we all um, begin our walk this Holy Week. Um, if you will take a look in your bulletin this morning, you will see that there are several offerings that will come up this week. The opportunity to worship at St. Mary Magdalene on Monday, Thursday, on Good Friday, and then um, the um, service on Saturday night, which we usually hold at 5 o'clock, will be at 7 p.m. this Saturday, 7 p.m. this Saturday we will have um, the Easter Vigil. And then our services next Sunday will be the regular services where we will celebrate Easter at both 8 and 10.30 a.m. 
Um, also, I wanted to um, announce uh, so that you got a chance to see it and put it on your calendar. On April 26th, the youth will be holding a fundraiser, a spaghetti supper, and it will be in the parish hall. Um, we hope that um, all of you will take an opportunity to help the youth and raise money for their trip to Canuga. It is the most um, important um, mission trip that they take themselves on their own pilgrimage as they head up to spend a week with um, their fellow pilgrims up in North Carolina. Um, it has a huge impact on the youth of this parish and also on the families. So we hope that you'll take the opportunity to join us and put that on your calendar on April 26th, the Spaghetti Supper. Um, also, um, the any of you that ordered the lamb-shaped cakes um, where for, um, for Easter, they will be available in, in the parish. Saturday, this coming Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then I believe also they'll be available right after the service, or right before the service on, on Sunday. So I hope that you will um, avail yourself of that. Also in the back of the church, there's a sign-up sheet for the um, prayer vigil, which we will hold right after um, Monday, Thursday services conclude. And the times are listed. There are plenty of vacant spaces where you can sign your name and come in. You do not have to be the only one that is here praying, but we do hold an all-night vigil um, for that service until the Good Friday service. So we hope that you'll take a few minutes and, and sign your name on a line and, and take some time out of your day to come in and, um, and sit quietly and pray here in the church um, while we await the, um, the time for Good Friday. Are there any other... This is a good opportunity to empty out maybe the little nooks and crannies in your car where you have some spare change and you need to get rid of it. This would be a perfect opportunity to try to do that and, and clean out those little nooks and crannies in your car. Um, also, I would like to take the opportunity to um, help ask all of you to help us invite the community to come and worship with us this week, um, sometime during um, the, the Holy Week or most especially on Easter Sunday at either the 8 or the 10.30 a.m. service. And if they have small children, it's a perfect opportunity to come and have a whole lot of fun because we will have an Easter egg hunt right after the 10.30 service. So I hope that all of you will take the opportunity to invite someone here, invite someone to church so that they can worship on, on Easter Sunday. Is there anyone celebrating a birthday and an anniversary or traveling? We invite you to come forward for a blessing. Birthdays? wedding anniversaries, and travels. Lots of birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, and raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may the peace which passes all understanding abide with them all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may continue to be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, in his presence we find wherever we go. Preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Travel in peace. Return to us safely. Walk in
can love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. By his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. Forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. That the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you forever.
let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.